Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more uh, latest uh, news so if you do consider uh, drop your likes and if you do consider uh, subscribe uh, to the channel um, as always so um, I do believe um, it's more uh, than likely you know, that Mauricio Pochettino uh, will be a uh, Manchester United uh, next uh, manager I think he's our primary candidate uh, to replace um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, at the football club because obviously you know, reflecting on our bad uh, start to the season Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of course, um, he's under a serious uh, pressure um, at Manchester United, and recent reports have actually indicated out if we had to suffer um, a heavier defeat uh, to Liverpool, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job, you know, could be um, in serious uh, jeopardy. Now, obviously, you no, know, we we are enjoying um, our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three decades. Uh, you still get it. <coughs> you still getting a uh, certain uh, people that actually you know do have sympathy for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because obviously a lot of people are saying you know this is the worst Manchester United team you know they have seen for years um, in this uh, generation because obviously you know reflecting back um, under the Alex Ferguson era you know we had um, a fantastic team back under the um, Alex Ferguson era but obviously now we know it's a new era with different players uh, you know different groups that obviously you know uh, we um, are building and that uh, but like I said I did say you know Due to um, our um, inconsistency, I think you know everyone's got to take the blame. So I do believe um, it is a mixture um, in that aspect. But I think the vast majority of the blame uh, stems uh, from the board. And you know recently, you know uh, Gary Neville, you know he came out and he had his um, overarching view on everything, and he. Gary Neville has actually, you know, uh, criticised uh, the Manchester United board. Obviously, you know, the board have actually, you know, in my opinion, been a liability uh, for several years. Obviously, you know, with the poor recruitment, you know, where uh, the poor uh, selection of managers, you know, the board didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough, you know, during uh, the summer, because obviously, you know, he didn't get um, all the players, you know, that he did uh, want to uh, recommend in, uh, to the football club. So I think the I think the vast majority of the blame uh, does stem from the board. Also, some of the blame uh, does uh, stem uh, from Ed Woodward. Uh, obviously, Ed Woodward um, has got to uh, take uh, some responsibility. I think now reportedly Ed Woodward is starting to lose his patience uh, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and I think you know also some of the blame does stem from Solskjaer because obviously some of his tactics um, and that um, are questionable um, and I do admit you know Manchester United um, are very very uh, tactically inept and also some of the blame you know does uh, stem uh, from a lot of uh, players because a lot of players of course um, are um, under uh, performing so so far this season, you know, we've only registered nine points from eight uh, league games. So in that aspect, you know, we've only won two uh, league games and we've drawn uh, three. That's only the points, you know, we have uh, registered uh, so far this season. And we know that's uh, nowhere near uh, good enough, you know, to our uh, standards. Uh, I think it's now 11 away games we've had that Solskjaer has had without a win um, at Manchester United. And I do believe now uh, we have the fourth most... We have the fourth worst um, Premier League record um, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got appointed as uh, the club's uh, full-time manager. I think it's only Southampton, Watford and Brighton that have uh, the worst uh, records uh, than Manchester United. But, you know, Solskjaer overall now has been at the club, uh, I think, around uh, 10 months Um so he hasn't really um, had um, a long uh, tenure at the moment. And I did say managers, of course, who do require time at the football clubs obviously don't get that time anymore because we do know now um, in this generation uh, the boards um, are um, a lot more uh, ruthless. But yeah, Solskjaer's been at the club round, now um, around uh, 10 months. Obviously, Solskjaer got appointed in, in December of last year following the dismissal um, of Jose Mourinho. Um, obviously, you know, Solskjaer came in, as you all remember, at first um, as the interim manager of the football club. Um, obviously, you know, that was interim manager for three months and you know Solskjaer did really really well in that three month period you know the results were good the performances were good he got the best um, out of these uh, group um, of players and he exceeded expectations but since he got the job permanently back in March earlier on this year everything of course has just seemed to have all gone wrong when Solskjaer was the interim manager he won his first eight games you know he won 14 games um, out of 19 um, in total but like I did as you say on my video yesterday it's a different kettle of fish of course you know when you do uh, get uh, the job uh, permanently but I think a lot of a vast majority of Manchester United fans, you know, were saying uh, at the end of last season. I think they've also been saying it quite recently that you know we shouldn't have given Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job. You know we should have waited at some point until the end of last season, or you know we should have waited at some point until this season to decide you know whether to give him the job um, or not. But you know in a way um, I do feel sorry for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because I like I did I've been mentioning in my last in my last couple of videos. I think Manchester United have put him into a really uh, difficult uh, position. So in that aspect, you know um, I do uh, really 
really uh, feel sorry for him. But I just think the job's too big for Solskjaer. And, um, I think, you know, the the only reason we stuck with Solskjaer, you know, for this uh, present uh, time is because, obviously, you know, he was a club legend in that because he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years. And, you know, um, he flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance and obviously made 366 appearances in all competitions as a player and scored um, 126 goals. Obviously, one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's most iconic moments as a player, obviously, was back in 1999, of course, when he did win the club, the treble. Obviously, you know, that's the, one of the club's uh, greatest um, achievements. And Solskjaer has got that proven pedigree um, as a player, but he just hasn't he just hasn't got, you know, that managerial um, experience to the highest level. So he isn't good enough, you know, to succeed um, as manager, you know. Solskjaer did win a couple of Norwegian titles when he was with Mould. Obviously, you know, he also managed uh, Cardiff, but he only had a really short uh, tenure with Cardiff. And his record with Cardiff, you know, was also, you know, uh, very, very um, bad. But yeah, Manchester United now are basically facing a relegation battle because we're only two points um, above uh, relegation and you know the last time this football club I think we were relegated was back in 1974 which I think now um, is over a 40 odd uh, year ago but for me I don't think he's the right man for Manchester United you know so kind of like I do keep mentioning I want his tenure to become a uh, successful um, at Manchester United but it's not going to become successful and you know, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and uh, Marrera. And I did initially say, you know, we haven't got the uh, structure to keep sacking managers, despite the fact, you know, that three managers um, have already uh, been uh, sat uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and uh, Marrera. Um, but I do credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in certain aspects, as I do keep mentioning. You know, he has got a lot of uh, faith in his young upcoming players. Um, obviously, he did get rid of a lot of the deadwood, you know, during uh, the summer. And I still believe that, you know, despite the fact that a lot of players have now left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival, I still believe, you know, these more players that do need to leave the football club in January and uh, next summer. And, you know, he did uh, recommend, you know, three good players to the squad during the summer. You know, obviously, we spent, what, nearly £150 million on Daniel James and wan and of course on Harry Maguire and to be fair we have seen glimpses of what good signings they've proven to be so far so it's good in the aspect you know that we did address some of the problematic areas during the summer you know we got that experienced centre half in you know we also got that right back in uh, but obviously you know we didn't you know get a midfielder in because that midfield area is one of the priority areas where Manchester United need to strengthen up um, obviously you know we need a right well we was in search for a right winner for the majority of the summer I think definitely Manchester United uh, do uh, need um, a striker so you know these still areas, you know, of course, uh, where Manchester United are lacking. I am aware that Manchester United, you know, do uh, need uh, more signings, but you still, you know, you obviously you've got the vast majority of Manchester United fans demanding Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out of the football club. Uh, obviously, I think, you know, he probably will be gone by Christmas if this bad run of form, you know, does continue to persist in that. I don't think that things are going to turn around um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, um, if I'm going to be uh, quite uh, monetary, so probably believe, you know, you uh, will be uh, gone uh, by Christmas, but you're still getting, like I said, certain Man United fans that, you know, are still willing to back him, you know, you're still getting certain pundits like Neville, Roy Keane and that, you know, believing that we should give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer more time, you know, we should give him at least a couple more transfer windows, you know, to you know, make further more investment, you know, to see who else, you know, he can recommend in uh, to the football club. Obviously, you know, Solskjaer is already making uh, plans uh, for uh, the January uh, transfer window, so to um, his head wooded than that. I think if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still to be here by January, I think he does. he's keen on continue, continuing uh, the policy of recruiting uh, young uh, British players, you know, like he did do um, early on um, in the summer. But definitely, you know, reflecting on our bad, you know, run of form and that, you know, definitely Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, is accountable for that. So some of the blame stems from him, but obviously, you know, uh, not um, all of the blame uh, stems uh, from him. But a lot of people, you know, do believe uh, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, um, is clueless. Um, but like I did initially say, you know, we've got to get into that top four this season. That's very, very imperative um, indeed, because obviously, we know, we want to get back into the Champions League. Um, obviously, you know, we... We failed to qualify for the Champions League last season. And I did say, you know, that was one of the main reasons, you know, that went against us during uh, the summer. Because obviously, you know, when you're not in a uh, Champions League football, obviously, you know, it's going to be harder to attract uh, players uh, to the elite uh, level. And, you know, we're enjoying a worse season this season than what we saw last season. And, you know, last season was bad enough, you know, finished sixth. You know, I think last season must have finished around 32 points behind Manchester City. And I think last season was the lowest we finished, you know, since uh, the David uh, Moyes and Moreira. But yeah, I think, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, will be uh, gone uh, soon and obviously he will be the fourth permanent, uh, fourth manager, you know, to be sat there uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera. So we do know, obviously, you know, there has, you know, been a lot of talks about managers coming, like I mentioned um, at the beginning of the video. I think Pochettino, you know, probably will be Manchester United's uh, next uh, manager. Now, obviously, you know, 
Don't forget, you know, before we recommended Ole Gunnar Solskjaer into the football club um, after the sacking of Jose Mourinho, don't forget, you know, we went in from Richard Pochettino and I think he was our number one priority target. And I think, you know, if Solskjaer is to be sacked, it's more than likely that the club will reignite their interest in Mauricio Pochettino because a lot of people believe he'd succeed at Manchester United. He'd suit the strappings in that arm of the football club because obviously Mauricio Pochettino is highly experienced in the Premier League. I know my element of concern about Pochettino is obviously he hasn't uh, won out um, in terms of the silver but I think prior to that he's a really really good manager you know he's good at developing young players and that like he has done during his time with Tottenham he's now into his sixth season with Tottenham um, he's Mauricio Pochettino so he's third round uh, five uh, years uh, with Tottenham so far but he's now into his sixth season obviously Tottenham have enjoyed a um, really bad, bad start to the season so obviously I think also Mauricio Pochettino um, is under uh, pressure um, at Tottenham but we was in for him you know for so long before we recommended Solskjaer in but obviously you know the time my preference was Solskjaer over Mauricio Pochettino because obviously you know Solskjaer knows the culture of the football club also Solskjaer uh, was um, a cheaper uh, solution um, I think if we are to ignite our interest in Mauricio Pochettino I think you know we'll have to pay around £32 million pounds in compensation obviously to hire him in uh, to the football club I don't think his contract has got a release clause I think you know Pochettino did sign a new five year contract uh, with Tottenham last summer worth around uh, £8.5 million a year um, if you do uh, remember rightly um, but yeah, he's done really, really well with Tottenham. Um, obviously, you know, spent quite a bit of money at Tottenham. Obviously, you know, did really, really well though in his uh, short tenure when he was with Southampton. Um, I think Pochettino now has been managing for around what just over a decade. Obviously, he's, he's, he began his managerial career um, in 2009 with Espanyol. But yeah, a lot of people think you know he would be uh, the right uh, man uh, for uh, Manchester United and that. Um, there's been other managers, you know, you know, thrown into the equation as well. Obviously, we do know recent reports uh, from the Italian press um, have actually you know, um, been talking about, you know, Masmiliano Allegri. Reports were coming out not too long ago saying that we've also made him as our primary candidate, you know, to replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer. Uh, Masmiliano Allegri um, stepped down, as you all know, as Juventus manager um, early on in the summer. Um, he stepped down as Juventus manager um, early on um, in the summer. Um, I, he obviously served around five years uh, with Juventus obviously the majority of his way won obviously you no know, came um, at Juventus uh, but yeah Masmiliano spent the entirety of his managerial career so far in Italy um, I think he also spent the entirety of his uh, playing uh, career um, in Italy in that um, obviously he's never managed or played in the Premier League as yet I do believe you know that Masmiliano um, Ligre, I think um, is in um, his 50s but it was recent reports saying that you know he was interested in taking the Manchester United job you know to uh, replace uh, Maligan and Solskjaer you know I think the there was I was reading a report the other day and it, Brendan Rodgers um, had also you know got mentioned. Um, I can't see us getting a uh, Brendan Rodgers uh, because I think he's happy uh, with Leicester. Obviously, you know Brendan Rodgers only started managing uh, Leicester uh, you know early on um, in the summer, so this is actually his first season there uh, with Leicester. And you know Brendan Rodgers um, has done a um, really really good job. He's also proven him um, in the Premier League obviously before he was at Leicester he served a good couple of years with Celtic obviously you know he was at Liverpool um, at one point had a good 2013-14 season with Liverpool so um, also you know Brendan Rodgers um, has also you know been mentioned he actually emulated the football you know that he did at Swansea and obviously at the time you know brought uh, that uh, to Liverpool um so who would you recommend into Manchester United you know, to replace um, Oligan and Solskjaer? But you know, there's still certain people and that believe that you know us getting rid of Solskjaer at this moment in time or before Christmas, you know, would not uh, solve uh, many uh, problems um, at Manchester United. You know, some people you know are sticking, uh, are backing him. You know, there's some United fans that are you know pointing pointing the finger more at you know Ed Woodward um, and the board, or you'll just get a lot of Man United fans that are blaming everyone. You know, also we're criticising uh, the Glazers. Don't forget, but I did not initially say. You know, I don't like the way the football club um, has been run in the last uh, six um, or seven years, if I'm going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. Um, but yeah, you know, things need to turn around at um, Manchester United because, you know, reflecting on the history of this football club, you know, because we are the most successful team in England historically, you know, reflect on the amount of money that's been invested into the football club in the last, what, six or seven years, we should be much, much more of a commanding uh, position, you know, than we're in uh, now. Um, but I didn't necessarily say, you know, our aspirations, you know, will be that top four in the next couple of seasons because analysing our squad there um, at the moment you know it's nowhere near good enough to win uh, the league and some people believe you know we need at least four to work 
four or five world class signings. You know, if we are to be a future title contenders, and obviously if we are to get back, you know, to where we do uh, want to uh, be. Uh, but obviously, you know, Solskjaer you know, does want to bring that fear factor back to the football club. You know, he wants to bring that winning mentality uh, back to the football club, and we know none of that's uh, been uh, there uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Rera. But you know, take into account, like I said, you know, Ferguson, you know, we recommended him in for Aberdeen back in what 1984, 1985, and obviously, you know, Ferguson, you know, didn't win out in his what first three to four years um, at Manchester United but we know uh, that you know back in the old generation you know managers got the time that they would have liked and that managers don't get that time anymore like I uh, mentioned um, earlier um, they don't get uh, that uh, time um, anymore but yeah he didn't win out in his first four years actually I think was what one game away from getting the sack but didn't and then look what Alex Ferguson, you know, basically, you know, went and accomplished. You know, we had, what, 20-odd uh, years um, of success um, under him and that. And I did say, you know, Solskjaer can't invoke... Solskjaer can't invoke, you know, Ferguson's legacy to save him um, at this football club. And no one, regardless who our manager is, you know, no one will ever follow Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, we'll never replicate, you know, what we uh, did um, under um, Alex Ferguson and that. Um, Never ever, but you know, it's actually you know, now worse under the Oligan and Solskjaer era, you know, than what it was under jo the Jose Mourinho era. You know, it's also worse uh, now under the Solskjaer era than even than, than it was under the David Moyes era because obviously, you know, we only had David Moyes for around what 10 months. Um, obviously, you know, at the time Ferguson's retirement well when Ferguson retired he obviously you know recommended David uh, Moyes um, into the job because obviously they're both Scottish and obviously you know they got on uh, really really well and like I did mention you know that was a uh, one mistake uh, that Alex Ferguson made you know recommending you know, David Moyes in but Moyes lasted only 10 months at the football club you know some people are still reflecting back you know, then, you know, maybe saying we should have given, you know, David Moyes a bit more time. But I said, you know, he was never um, a Manchester United manager. Um, obviously, you know, never dealt with top players, never obviously had that proven pedigree. Obviously, he managed average teams before he obviously, you know, came, came uh, to United and that. But yeah, David Moyes only lasted 10 months. So he was the manager that's had the shortest tenure at the football club, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera. And, you know, reflecting back under the Jose and Mourinho where uh, Marrera, obviously, you know, Jose and Mourinho served two and a half years um, at Manchester. United and obviously you know Jose Mourinho's had you know he's been the longest serving manager so far we've had you know since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Rare because like I said Mourinho served two and a half years um, at the football club but he, his, his tenure didn't work out despite the fact you know he won the Europa League and League Cup in his first season uh, with Manchester United and I, again I think you know we recommended Jose Mourinho win far too late and I said you know you could arguably say if we had a recommended Mourinho win after Ferguson's retirement then maybe it would have been a different scenario uh, with Manchester United but maybe we did appoint him in uh, too late but the reasons why it didn't work out um, under the Jose Mourinho really because obviously you know he had bad disputes with the board you know he had bad disputes with the top players obviously you know the board weren't back in the signings you know that he wanted to recommend in uh, to the football club uh, last summer uh, you know Mourinho spent a substantial amount at the club you know I think he spent was it 400 or just under 400 million pounds on 11, on 11 players so analysing the majority of these, you know, man, this Manchester United team, uh, the majority of the team um, is actually, you know, uh, Jose Mourinho's. And obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of uh, Jose Mourinho's uh, players. Um, but yeah, and obviously, you know, Mourinho, obviously, you know, tenure finished um, last season after obviously, you know, uh, the three one uh, defeat uh, to Liverpool. So it could be a, it could be, co it could be compatible in that aspect with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know he could get sat, you know, if we suffer um, a heavier defeat uh, from Liverpool. You just uh, never, never know. Um, You just uh, never, never know, uh, basically. But yeah, you can still quite frankly say, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still um, in the process um, of rebuilding uh, this Manchester United squad. I don't think he's the right man uh, for Manchester United. I did recently say, you know, I think we, you know, we still, we still, we still, still should, you know, uh, give him a uh, time um, at the football club. Um, because, you know, he's not uh, the only one uh, to blame, uh, basically. Um, but, yeah, a hell of a lot of money's been spent at Manchester United. I think an uh, estimated guess, I think around, what, 800, you know, is it, an estimated guess it's around 800 odd million pounds that's been spent at Manchester United in all the managerial areas since the Alex Ferguson era. So that's just under, what, a billion pounds. And that's not taken into account, of course, what was spent under Ferguson and that. You know, if you want to take into account what was spent under Ferguson, obviously, you know, it's uh, way um, over a billion pounds that's been invested into the football club. So, 
always, you know, getting them Galactico players or always, you know, spending big on players doesn't, you know, always guarantee you success. And this is what I did say earlier on this summer. I said, you know, maybe we should be sensible over our uh, recruitment. It's not always about, you know, spending big um, on players and that. Um, but, um, yeah, and, you know... You know, we can't, you know, put up with this term anymore, you know. We, we, we're sitting, what, 12 firm in the league, you know, sitting two points term above uh, relegation, you know. There's some Man United fans, you know, that fear that we could get relegated. I don't think it will happen. Like I mentioned on my last couple of videos that the club's too big to get relegated, you know. The, there's a lot of money into the, there's too much money into the football club. I don't think, you know, we will uh, get relegated and that, you know, I don't, I definitely know, I don't uh, think, you know, uh, that uh, will um, happen. Uh, but you're still getting quite a lot of pundits and former Man United players, you know, that are back in so I've also got Ryan Giggs, you know, back in Solskjaer and that, you know, Giggs says I think he needs to bring at least five more players into the football club. Um, and we've also, <coughs> we've also, you know, got players on big contracts at Manchester United, don't forget, you know, we haven't only spent big on players, we've also got, you know, players on substantial, you know, wages at the football club. Obviously, you've got David De Gea on, what, 375 grand a week. He's the highest played goalkeeper now in the world. Um, you've obviously got Paul Pogba. He's on just, what, under 300 grand a week. Um, and Paul Pogba, I think, analysing the majority of his Manchester United career, I think he has uh, been uh, mainly um, inconsistent um, as Paul Pogba. And I've been very, very uh, disappointed there uh, with Paul Pogba. You know, he's been mainly inconsistent in comparison to his time, of course, you know, when he was um, at Juventus. Um, but he has been, you know, very, very poor. And, you know, in the games he has played this season, you know, he hasn't performed to the same sort of extent as, you know, Daniel James and wan and Harry uh, Maguire have. Uh, I'm glad that we convinced him to stay at the football club, at least for this summer, Paul Popper, but I think he's orchestrating on making a move to Madrid either in January or uh, next summer. So I still definitely believe that Paul Popper, you know, will leave the football club. Um, Obviously, you know, Paul Pogba's been out with injury. I think he's still out with injury at the moment. But I think, you know, he should be back for the Liverpool game after the international break. I think the vast majority of our players now uh, that are injured, you know, uh, should be back for the Liverpool game um you know, um, after the um, international uh, break. You know, recent reports have actually come out and said Paul Pogba, you know, is demanding a substantial 600 grand a week from Manchester United if, of course, um, he's uh, to extend his contract to the football club. You know, 600 grand a week, of course, you know, um, equates to around, what, 30, 31 million pounds a year. I can't see Manchester United willing to meet his wage demands, even though we've probably got the financial power, you know, to meet uh, his wage demands because... You know, we are a massive club, you know, we've got a massive area of revenues and that. And Paul probably on his current deal at the moment is on around, what, 290 grand a week. So in that aspect, he's, you know, one of the highest played uh, players um, at the football club. And Paul Pop has got two years left in his contract at Manchester United with an option, you know, to um, extend it by um, a further year. And I think I like he updated you on my video recently. I think Man United have become infuriated today with Paul Pop's contract. And that's obviously... <coughs> That's obviously now uh, reflecting um, on the wage demands and that. Uh, but yeah, Paul Popper's uh, out with a foot injury. Um, but obviously, you know, um, he's uh, been uh, further um, assessed. Um, you've got Rashford again. You know, Rashford's on what uh, nearly 300 grand a week. I think it's initially 200 grand a week. But with bonuses included, I think it does rise up to around uh, 300 grand a week. And again, you know, Rashford, you know, I've been uh, very, very um, disappointed uh, with Marcus Rashford and you know, I think analysing his performances this season, I think he's been way below par. I think he's been too um, inconsistent, you know, in comparison to his time, you know, when he first broke into the Manchester United senior squad. Because he has been in the senior squad with us, you know, since uh, 2016. Obviously, Rashford not too long ago, you know, recently you know, where uh, recovered uh, from a groin injury and that. I still believe Rashford needs more time at the football club. You know, he is um, only uh, 21 uh, years of age. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development um, in him. Um, and he has actually overall so far spent the entirety of his career with Manchester United. You know, he has been a United player uh, since uh, the age um, of seven. Uh, but yeah, you know, reflecting on his status of the football club, you know, he should be, you know, putting a uh, much more uh, better performances out. You know, You've got Lingard, he's on around, what, 100-odd grand a week. Again, he's been very, very uh, disappointing uh, this season. The same thoughts about him as, as I've got a Rashford, you know, reflect on his status at the football club. You know, he should be uh, putting much more better performances out. Obviously, Lingard recently, you know, sustained a hamstring problem in the 0-0 draw with AZ Alkmaar and that. So, I think, you know, he should be also, you know, back uh, for uh, Liverpool. Um I think, um, yes, yeah, so a lot of players so far this season have been, you know, massively uh, disappointing. Um, 
But I think, you know, these still certain players, you know, to be fair, you know, that have actually, you know, stepped, stepped up to the plate. You know, I think that Tom Way's done mainly well this season. I think he had a bad game against Newcastle, but I think prior to that, I think he's done mainly well this season. And in regards to Matt Tom Way being the long-term solution for Man United, you know, I have got element of concerns about that. You know, these question marks around Matt Tom Way, you know, can he keep the consistency up? And I hope he can keep the consistency up in that, but he's deserved to keep his place in the team, reflecting on his impressive performances. Um, but yeah, um, I've been really, really impressed with him mainly. Uh, my opinions on Fred, a lot of people, you know, don't believe Fred is good enough to represent the football club. Obviously, I think, in my own opinion, everyone have a different view on it, but I think, you know, Fred needs to be given more time at the football club. Uh, Fred's only been at Manchester United since last summer, and we paid, obviously, was it uh, just um, under uh, £50 million pounds for him? But, you know, we need to give Fred more time at the football club. Um, let's be honest, back under the Jose Mourinho era, Fred never really got the chance, but obviously he has. He got some chances towards the back end of last season. You know, he's played in quite a few games this season. I think, you know, he has played, he's had a good couple of games this season, um, as Fred, so I will, you know, credit him um, in that aspect. I don't know if he's uh, the long-term uh, solution for Manchester United, um, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. Um, Obviously, you know, Matic, um, I think, you know, he's been very, very poor so far this season. I think he's another one um, of the problematic uh, players um, at the football club. Obviously, you know, we could lose him on a free at the end of the season because his current uh, contract uh, does um, expire. Uh, we, the club do have an option to extend Matic's uh, contract, you know, uh, by um, a third year. Matic has played in quite a lot of games this season, mainly due, you know, to the um, absentee um, of Paul Pogba. But obviously, he's uh, no longer a first choice um, in the Manchester United team. Obviously, Matic is now, what, uh, 31 uh, years of age. Um, obviously, at the time, we did get Matic under the Jose Mourinho area. Obviously, you know, he wasn't our first choice signing anywhere. He was our uh, third choice uh, signing so I think we paid you know was it around uh, 40 million pounds for him again you know I think uh, we overpaid uh, for uh, Nemanja Matic but you know he's too slow you know uh, makes uh, that midfield uh, look totally imbalanced so I've got a lot of uh, element of concerns about him but I think like I mentioned I think any of our midfielders now are much uh, better um, options uh, than Matic in my um, own um, opinion um in my uh, more my opinion. But like I did mention as well, you know, we have we have got a lot of, you know, experienced players in the squad and obviously a lot of um, aging up players in the squad. But, you know, we've also got a lot of young players, you know, that are developing and, you know, trying to improve at Manchester United. And I think, you know, Manchester United, you know, do need to give, you know, obviously, you know, all the youth, you know, more time. Um, I don't think all the young upcoming players, in my opinion, you know, will become a success um, at the football club. I don't think they'll become a success at the football club. I think there may be only a couple that do become a success um, at Manchester United. And I think definitely, you know, Mason Greenwood, you know, will become a success um, at the football club. Um, obviously, you know, he made his full debut for the football club at the end of last season in the 2-0 um, home uh, defeat uh, to uh, Cardiff. And, you know, I like, uh, you know, Mason Greenwood um, a lot. Obviously, he's not yet started the game from the start in the Premier League this season. Um, he's think so far this season he has uh, made uh, six uh, substitute um, appearances. Uh, Mason Greenwood obviously played on the right against Dautmar. I think also came on to play on the right um, against in the 1-0 defeat uh, to Newcastle. But I think he's... I think he's better in a number nine, if I'm going to be quite honest with you now, um, is Mason Greenwood. And I think, in you know, using that, in that aspect, I think he's a much better solution than Marcus Rashford um, in that number nine and that. Because um, I think the games Mason Greenwood has played this season has been very, very impressive. Don't forget he scored twice from two starts against, obviously, FC Astana um, and Rochdale. So, in them two particular games, you know, Mason Greenwood uh, came to play with a moment um, of quality. But, obviously, it's impossible to leave Mason Greenwood out of the team. Obviously, you know, if he keeps scoring, and obviously, if he keeps the consistency up, obviously, Solskjaer, um, as a short, um, he will uh, get more of uh, minutes um, under um, his belt. And he has just recently, you know, turned 18 years, uh, 18 years of age at the beginning of this month. So, Mason Greenwood has, you know, still got a lot of years ahead of him. I think by the time he's, what, 23, 24, I think he'll be a world-class centre forward if I'm going to be um, honest with you. Um, so I've been very, very impressed, you know, with Mason Greenwood. Um, I've got some different thoughts about Chong. Uh, I've got element of concerns about Chong. I think he's totally comparison to Mason Greenwood, and I think maybe he's one of the young upcoming players Manchester United maybe needs to consider loaning out. 
maybe because you know we feel as though he isn't you know good enough to our standards you know maybe that's what you know maybe some people will think Chon's only actually you know played him a couple of uh, games uh, this season and don't forget you know he did receive loan offers from PSV this summer um, I think he also received a loan offer from his uh, former club uh, Fernoid but obviously you know he had turned these loan offers down because obviously you know he wants to commit um, his uh, long term uh, future well, well, not I don't know about his long term future, but wants to commit his future this season uh, with Manchester United. Um, but maybe we should orchestrate, you know, loaning some of the young, young upcoming players out as well, because maybe it will be beneficial for their career. Maybe it will also, you know, gain them uh, more um, experience. I also believe that Alex Tuanzebe can definitely, you know, become a success at the football club. I think he's quite reliable because I think. Alex Twanzebe, the games he's played in this season, obviously, you know, he has uh, performed uh, quite uh, well. So I have been really, really impressed with him. And his versatility is very, very good, is uh, Alex Twanzebe, because he's predominantly a centre back, but can also play as a left back and a right back. Don't forget, Twanzebe played at left back um, against uh, Arsenal. Um, but yeah, very, very uh, good uh, player. You know, we've got Diego Dallo. We only got him last summer from Porto. You know, Diego Dallo um, has been at the club now. Um, just over the, uh, just over the year, we got him last summer back under the uh, Jose uh, Mourinho uh, Moreira. Uh, we paid around was it nineteen twenty million for him. He needs more time at Man United. He's so far this season only made two appearances for the football club. Um, you've also got uh, Angel Gomez. I think he's played a couple of times this season. He's another one um, of our uh, midfield um, options. You've obviously got Jimmy Garner, um, another one um, of our young upcoming players. I think, as as far as I'm aware, I don't think he's played this season. I, th I know that he did play quite a few times there for while uh, pre-season, uh, did uh, Jimmy uh, Garner. Um, but yeah, we have got a lot of uh, young uh, players in the squad. And another thing I do like about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, I do like him a lot anyway. I just don't think he's good enough for United. But I think he's got a lot of honesty about him. And at least he's admitted, you know, he's admitted that, you know, we haven't been uh, good enough this season. You know, the execution, you know, we haven't had the best execution. This is also what I mentioned. But he, he gives his overall analysis on the 1-0 defeat to Newcastle and he knows the club are in a position you know that they shouldn't be in um, and I think you know he mentioned that the situation you know is not as bad as it was you know when we lost to Everton 4-0 uh, was that uh, last season back um, in April and that was obviously you know an embarrassing defeat after that particular game if you remember last season Solskjaer obviously you know came out um, and I think public publicly um, apologised so I did praise Ole and Solskjaer um, in that aspect after, obviously after that 4-0 defeat uh, to Everton last season but you know, everything basically, you know, just needs to improve at Manchester United. Everything needs to improve. You know, the results need to improve. The performances need to improve. You know, the away form needs to improve, like I mentioned. You know, Solskjaer's had now 11 away games without a win. You know, we haven't won away from home since the PSG game last season, of course, when we did uh, produce that miraculous comeback. You know, our home form's also been poor. You know, the style of play is atrocious. No, obviously, no one's happy with the brand name of football. You know, certain players need to improve. Everything, basically, you know, needs to um, improve um, at Manchester United. And, you know, I think, you know, what will help matters is us getting rid of more players that are not good enough for the club. Getting rid of the manager, but maybe again, maybe some people say it won't solve many problems getting rid of Solskjaer. Maybe get rid of Ed Woodward, uh, because obviously a lot of United fans have been demand demanding Ed Woodward out of the football club now uh, for quite uh, some time. Um, and everything needs to improve because you know we, we you know we've only managed nine Premier League goals this season in eight Premier League games. That is um, absolutely um, atrocious, and that. And I think you know following following the dismissal um, of Lukaku and Sanchez. And especially with the injury of Anthony Martial, I think that's totally left us um, exposed um, in that um, attacking line. And, you know, we need to get, you know, we definitely no need to uh, recommend um, a striker in, um, in my um, opinion. Um... We need to recommend the striker in, um, in my um, opinion. And, you know, it's just absolutely embarrassing, you know, the lack of quality, lack of balls into the box, you know, struggling to create chances. You know, like I mentioned, haven't registered a single shot on target in the last two games. You know, this is just not Man United. It's just not Man United um, at all. And, um, but, yeah, so, obviously, I think another mistake the football club did make, and, you know, that was uh, getting uh, rid of uh, Ander Herrera. You know, Manchester United, you know, should have never got rid of Ander Herrera because you can arguably say, you know, Ander Herrera, you know, was one of our best players. 
you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera. He was one of our best players. You know, he said five years at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, we let Ander Herrera go on a free transfer. We let his contract run down. But I said we're known for doing that. You know, we're known for spending big on players or rather paying for players. And when it comes to letting them go, we let them go for next to nothing. We've done it in recent years. Like I said, there's been prime examples of it this summer. We've done it with, like I just mentioned, with Herrera. You know, we did it with Matty or Damian. I wasn't surprised Damian left. But I'm surprised, you know, the amount we let him go for. We let him go for next to nothing. Um, so that's bad business there from the football club. Uh, but yeah, we shouldn't let Herrera go because this is a good statistic statistic you know last season when Ander Herrera was playing I think we won all our games or we won uh, the majority of our games so that just indicates how the impact that Ander Herrera you know did uh, make him in that midfield um, Fellaini left I'm glad Fellaini left the football club you know he served six years at Man United and obviously for the majority of that six years you know he was mainly inconsistent you know he had the odd good game here and there but prior to that was mainly poor um, obviously Fellaini I think went to China uh, back um, in January and um, like I said, I was happy, you know, with the money, you know, we did generate, you know, from Lukaku's uh, departure, you know, I was uh, very, very um, happy um, about that, um, you know, we've generated, what, 70 odd million pounds him, so basically, more or less, we recouped the money that we did pay for him uh, from Everton um, a couple of years ago, because the club paid around 75 million pounds for him from Everton, I think he's actually, you know, doing well at Interland now, is Lukaku, which is, you know, very, very good, but, you know, look, the main reason, you know, why Romelu Lukaku left Manchester United is obviously, you know, because he, he initially lost his players um, in the team and that and when you do lose your players in your team obviously you know you're slowly on your way um, out um, of the football club he initially lost his place in the team to Marcus Rashford and Lukaku served two years at Manchester United I thought he had a fantastic first season with the football club um he had a fantastic first season there with the football club but obviously didn't really replicate that in his second season but in all competitions for Manchester United in the two years he was with us I think he scored what 42 goals in 96 games in all competitions um, but yeah we need to get a rec we need to recruit a replacement for Lukaku obviously you know Sanchez <clears throat> I'm glad we got rid of him because he was obviously one of the problematic players at the football club obviously he's being loaned out to Inter Milan so Sanchez and Lukaku are reuniting Um and, you know, to Sanchez's standards now, I think, you know, like I mentioned anyway, Italian football, you know, will suit me. I haven't really watched him at Inter Milan so far, so I can't really comment. But despite the fact that Sanchez is on loan with Inter Milan, Manchester United are still paying the vast majority of his wages. I still believe, you know, we're paying him around, what, a 300 grand a week. You know, Sanchez, obviously, Sanchez did enjoy a difficult 18 months with Manchester United. Um, obviously, he only managed five goals in 45 games in all competitions. And even if Sanchez, you know, would have stayed, you know, he only would have been assured to play regularly in the Cowbell Cup or the Europa League games. You know, he wouldn't have really got his opportunities um, in the Premier League. So I'm glad either way we got rid of him because he was inconsistent. Um, and um, like I said, you know, Valencia left at the end of last season after he served there uh, 10 years there uh, with Manchester United. He was a long serving player for the football club. Uh, Chris Smalling, of course, went out on loan to Roma for just under 3 million. So despite the fact that Smalling left, you know, we have still got our six uh, centre backs um, in the team. Um, so actually, you know, Italy has been a very popular destination, you know, for the vast majority of our uh, players uh, that have left uh, this summer. Don't forget, you know, we've um, also, you know, uh, loaned um, a couple of uh, goalkeepers out. Um, <laughs> We've also uh, loaned them um, a couple of their goalkeepers um, out, but yeah, you know, these this is you can't you can't take this into account um, as an excuse. You know, we've got injuries in that, and I, I know we've got injuries, but you know, it's no excuse. You know, the way we are uh, playing them um, at the moment and that, and you know, obviously Martial, he's missed the last six games in all competitions. You've got Luke Shaw, he's missed the last six games um, in all competitions, and we are aware that. They're two imperative players for the football club and we do know the difference they can make and that. You know, Martial's obviously, you know, been out of a thigh injury. Luke Shaw's been out of a hamstring injury. And, you know, Martial now is into his sixth season at Manchester United. Um, well, sorry, fifth season, I think, as a Manchester United player. Not sixth, fifth season. He has scored over 50 goals for the club in all competitions. I think he actually scored his 50th goal, was it, um, early on in the season against Wolves. Um, obviously, you know, he played in the first three games, did Martial. But obviously, you know, he came off, he's been injured since the 2-1 home defeat uh, to Crystal Palace um, as Anthony and Martial. Um, but he has been um, a big miss because we do know the inspiration he does add in that attacking third of the pitch. You know, he's got that fluidity in that. Uh, and I think he'll succeed at Manchester United, Martial. Obviously got, conf got confirmed at the start of the season that obviously, you know, he has been given that number nine shirt. And I said he looks more effective in, a in that central position, even though he predominantly 
plays out on the plays out wide on the left. He's more he's more effective in that central position and still only had twenty three uh, years and the age is Martial, but I do still like him a lot. Still hasn't quite emulated that level in my opinion as yet though. With Luke Shaw, like I said, he's our first choice left back. Obviously, you know, we've played you know, quite a few players at left back, you know, due to his absence, but it has been mainly young that's been full full in his role um, at left back position due to his um absence. But, you know, Luke Shaw's been a huge uh, miss. But Marshall and Luke Shaw should be back for the game against Liverpool, uh, hopefully anywhere. And Wan Bissaka's missed the last two league games, missed the last three no competitions with illness. Um he's been out uh, with tonsillitis again. He's been a big miss because a lot of people do believe that and Wan Bissaka you know, has actually you know, been um, our most uh, consistent signing so far. And I do believe he has to be quite honest and he has, you know, done uh, really, really well. Um like I said, uh, Pop is still out of injury. You know, Bay is a long-term absence. Fossil Mensu is still out of injury. I think Phil Jones um, is out of injury. This is why um, he missed uh, the Outmar game. Um, so, yeah, you know, we have had uh, quite um, a few uh, players um, out of injury. But, you know, you can't, you know, take that into account um, as an excuse, basically, you know. Um, and uh, that. Um, and like I said, you know, we are, we are making plans for the January window, you know. Who are Manchester United, you know, going to try and sign in January, you know, there's been quite a few players on our agenda, you know, who we could go in for in January or next summer, you know, there's been obviously talks about Callum Wilson, you know, we could go in for him in January, there's obviously been talks about, um, there's been talks about Callum Wilson, there's also been talks about Mario Mandzukic, you know, from Juventus, there's, you know, also been talks about Sean Longstaff, you know, there's also been talks about Moussa Dembele, so these are the type of players, you know, that Man United, you know, could go in for in January, but I do believe the players we was in for during this summer, probably more than likely, you know, we will reignite our interest in, in some of them um, in January, um, and maybe leave uh, some um, until uh, next summer, but definitely more signings are needed um, at the football club, um, but yeah, so I think, you know, Pochettino you know, is the you know likely candidate to replace Solskjaer at Manchester United in that, um, in my um, opinion. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing um, as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.